welcome back. You're watching Texas Toolbox. My name is Justin. Our objective here is to leave things as good or better than we found them. Before we get installing the timing chain, I have a channel update for you. I'm still figuring things out with the channel and for those following and supporting as I learn, thank you so much for your input and support. I am updating the upload schedule from Friday evening to Sunday evening, but I haven't hammered down the exact time yet. When my girlfriend and I started this channel at the beginning of this month, I was very excited, but I didn't have any idea the huge time investment that building a YouTube channel involves. The discipline and routine to prioritize maintaining a weekly upload schedule just simply doesn't have the monetary reward motivation attached to it right now. That does not mean that I'm being a slugger towards this work and sharing what I love. There will be some inconsistency in the uploads until I can figure out what I can handle. Hopefully you'll stay with me. I will try to give you a consistent video upload schedule. I'll be working on creating a channel introduction video. It'll be probably a lot like what you're listening to right now. I need to decide how I'm going to structure the videos. A source of instruction or a blog mix between the two. The goal is to leave things better than we found them, and our focus is building a toolbox to accomplish that goal. For now, I'm considering these videos pilot episodes. As always, your input is appreciated. This won't be just a car channel. This video was supposed to be uploaded last week, but I was not happy with the quality of the clips I made. I decided I would upload it because this is an important step of the project. So we'll be talking about installing the timing chain on our QR25 rebuild series. Let's get into it. I start here by pointing to the timing marks on the chain. The number one cylinder, which is closest to the timing chain, is at top dead center. The cam lobes for the intake and exhaust over the number one cylinder are at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock respectively. The intake side has the variable valve timing sprocket. I'm constantly rechecking to make sure the chain maintains the correct orientation with the corresponding marks on the sprockets for the intake, exhaust, and crankshaft. You'll notice there is no chain for the balancing shaft unit because it is deleted. I hope to dedicate a video to the pros and cons of this modification in the future. This bead of RTV sealant placed on the surface between the timing cover and engine block is pure fan service, so enjoy. There are three gaskets on the bottom of the timing cover that connect the integrated oil pump from the oil pickup tube to the oil filter and from the filter to the rest of the engine. There are also several other gaskets that go between the interface of the timing cover and the engine block. These are vital to this part of the engine build and must be installed to ensure proper lubrication pressure is achieved in the motor. There are two dowel pins on either side of the timing cover which are used to align the timing cover with the block. Once the timing cover is aligned and the gaskets are checked to make sure they're in place, I use a few light taps of my dead blow hammer to seat the cover in place.
Some people wonder if it's necessary to remove the oil pan upper portion when doing a timing cover or timing chain job. Here's proof that it's possible that you can do it without removing the oil pan. Time to install the timing cover bolts and torque them in sequence. There are four types of bolts associated with the timing cover. A bolts are torqued to 36 foot pounds as well as D bolts. B and C bolts as well as IVT cover bolts are torqued to 108 inch pounds. Clockwise Starting from above the oil filter, the torque pattern is 15, 14, 13, 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 4, 2, 18, 17, 16, with 11 being in the middle. The bolt types Clockwise, starting from above the oil filter, are C, B, B, A, D, C, A, B, 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 A, D, D, A, B, B, C, with 11 being A. The letters refer to bolt links. Bolts of different lengths have different torque values, as I previously mentioned. The timing chain slack guide bolts and the timing chain guide bolts are torqued to 144 inch pounds. The timing chain tensioner and the balance shaft chain tensioner bolts are both torqued to 61 inch pounds. I'll put a light film of engine oil on the crankshaft front oil seal and then use a flat board to apply even pressure while installing it with a few light taps from my dead blow hammer. Finally, I will install a harmonic balancer using the tightening sequence in two stages. Step one, I'll tighten the crankshaft pulley to crankshaft bolt, 31 foot-pounds. Step two, I'll tighten the crankshaft
crankshaft pulley to crankshaft bolt an additional 60 degrees. Boo! <laughs> just kidding. Uh, just wanted to say thank you again for watching the video. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, add another tool to your toolbox, even if it's just knowledge, because right thinking leads to right actions. We'll see you guys on the next one.